a beautiful, warm Chris. prayer. Chris, Get us what, started. You want to say something? I don't know. Yeah, I saw you. I was just going to. Oh, sorry. I'll be talking so I could start the recording, but I went ahead and started it already. Okay. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. O heavenly King, comfort to the spirit of truth, who arts in all places, and to this all things, stretch out of good things, and give it of life. Come and dwell in us, and cleanse us from every stain, and save our souls, so gracious Lord. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us, and save us. Amen. 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 That was time efficient, Father. Good job. All right. All right, so um, we have Holy Saturday morning service that Charlie is going to um, share with us, and then um, then we'll move to the Rush service and um, the Midnight Office and Rush and Matins and Liturgy, and we're just going to sort of hit the highlights um, for all of those services. So Charlie, take it away. Okay, let me go share my screen here. And hold on. Okay. Can you guys see my screen okay? Yes. Okay. Let me just move all of you lovely people over here so I can see you too. All right. Excellent. Good. So, um, the Vesper Liturgy of Pascha is the one that's done on Saturday morning. You know, we do everything in anticipation, right? So the last two sessions we did on the Friday night service, the Lamentation service, which was the Orthros uh, for, for Holy Saturday. Now, in the morning, we're doing the Vespers for Pascha. So if, it's, if this were being done at a normal time, it'd be done like at 5 p.m. We do it in anticipation, so we're actually doing this liturgy in the morning, but make no mistake. It's a uh, it's a Vesper liturgy. Um, it also happens to be a very popular service in uh, in some of our churches, and I think you'll understand why after I have a chance to share with you uh, some of the highlights. Uh, when you read descriptions about Holy Week, sometimes you hear about this liturgy being the one that commemorates the descent of Christ, uh, you know, into Hades. Um, and there are definitely hymns that uh, talk about that that I'll I'll share with you, but uh, make no mistake, this is the first Paschal liturgy. The one where we say Christ is risen for the first time at night is the second uh, Paschal liturgy. It's the liturgy of Saint Basil that we do um, uh, once we get into the liturgy part, and the outline of the service, at least what we're going to cover. Here is, you know, we start off with the beginning of Vespers like we normally do, Psalm 140 and all that. Uh, and then we sing, O oh Lord, I have cried in tone one. And then the very first, um, the very first hymns uh, that we sing uh, are the resurrectional sticker on tone one that we're actually familiar with, which I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a second. Then we do some hymns for the descent into Hades. Uh, then we do Moses the Great. The same hymn that we did the night before, we talked about in our session, uh, you know, uh, last week. We do that again, followed by the tone one dogmaticum. We'll talk about that. Then there's the Old Testament readings, followed by the hymn of the three youths, and then usually right at this point is where we bring the catechumens uh, and those who are to be baptized, you know, uh, into the church. Then uh, we sing as many as been baptized. It's one of those handful of, of times where we sing that instead of the Trisagion hymn, in place of the Trisagion hymn. Uh, and then we have the epistle reading, followed by the great Prochemenon in tone seven, Arise, O God, then the Cherubic hymn, Let All Mortal Flesh, and then the remainder of the Liturgy of St. Basil. So we're going to cover some, I'm going to cover some highlights here uh, from this uh, from this very beautiful service uh, that we have on, on Saturday morning. So the first thing we're going to talk about uh, are the hymns that follow o, o Lord I Have Cried, which really tells us that this is this is the beginning of the resurrectional service, because after we sing O Lord I Have Cried in tone one, and you know we're all familiar with the Gazan, you know, O Lord I have cried out unto thee, right? And we go through the, the verses and then we get to the first hymn. The very first hymn, the text here is Accept our evening prayers, O Holy Lord, and grant us remission of our sins. 
for thou alone hast made manifest the resurrection unto the world. If you're familiar with the Kazan, accept our evening prayers, O holy Lord, and grant us remission of our sins. It's what you do every Saturday night when it happens to be tone one. So basically, uh, we're starting the, the tone cycle with tone one because this is the first, uh, uh, the basically the first Vespers. Um, this is the Vespers for Sunday of Pascha, and this is the first tone. And so we do four hymns that we're very familiar with that we sing every eight weeks throughout the uh, throughout the year. And then we have four more hymns uh, in tone eight. And I want to just share the text uh, of one of these hymns with you, because these are the hymns that talk about the descent into Hades. Today hath Hades sighed, crying, it were better for me that I had not received the begotten of Mary. For when he approached me, he loosed my power and crushed my gates of brass, arousing the souls which I had possessed, he being God. Wherefore, glory be to thy crucifixion and to thy resurrection, O Lord. Another one starts, today hath Hades sighed, crying. Again, we're talking about Hades sighing here. My power hath vanished because I received a dead man as one of the dead, but could not hold him completely. Rather, I lost with him those who were under my reign. From the beginning of time, I have held control over the dead, but this one raised all. Wherefore, glory be to thy crucifixion and to thy resurrection, O Lord. So after we hear that and we commemorate the descent into, into Hades, then we have a glory and a both now. The glory is uh, the great Moses that we talked about uh, last time, which was also sung on, on Friday night. But the both now is then the tone one dogmaticon. Dogmaticon, you know, the, the teaching of dogma that's, that's typical for Saturday night vespers. We have one of these in each of the eight tones. And this one um, is very familiar if you know the Kazan. Um, so bringing up the music, I think you'll just recognize it. Let us praise Mary the Virgin, etc. It's it's the same music again that we sing every eight weeks when it's tone one for Saturday night uh, vespers, because because we're at the resurrection now, so we get we get to sing this just like we would on the eve of a Sunday. After we, we, we get through that, sing glad some light, then we have the Old Testament readings. Uh, and there's different traditions uh, in different churches. In our Holy Week books, we have, we'll say, the best three readings in there. The first one being you know, Genesis, and then the second one from the book of Jonah, and then you know, everyone's uh, favorite, you know, the, the, the story of, uh, from Daniel of uh, you know, the three youths and King uh, Nebuchadnezzar. But one of the things that uh, I discovered early on, early on when we had a, a priest uh, that informed us of this is that there's actually 15 Old Testament readings that are traditionally done. Some parishes do all 15, some do three, some do maybe something in between. Uh, but all of these Old Testament readings are stories uh, that prophesy uh, uh, the four, uh, prophesy the resurrection in some way. It's the, it's basically the 15 readings of salvation history. Uh, and some of these readings are really wonderful. If you've, if you've never seen them before, you know, go look them up somewhere and, 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 uh, and you'll see the variety uh, that's there. I always, I always do reading number 10 because that's the one about Abraham, my, uh, my patron saint. Uh, but it's just, it's just really wonderful. But this, this last reading, about Daniel and the three youths, then concludes with a singing of uh, what's known as the hymn of the three youths. And in our Holy Week books here, it says this can be done either in tone six or uh, tone one. Um, uh, not to put Abuna on the spot, but uh, Abuna could think about how this would be done in tone six, as I've never seen this in tone six. I have an example I can play for you, at least in tone one, so you get an idea here. And it we have all these um, psalm verses uh, from the praises uh, that we uh, that get done uh, with uh, with this "O oh, praise ye the Lord and supremely exalt Him uh, unto the ages." Uh, 
And it talks about, uh, bless the, the Lord, ye waters, and ye sun and moon, and showers and dew. We like to call this the holy weather report, okay? So uh, I'll play for you now uh, an example of what this sounds like in, uh, uh, in tone one. And I'll show you some music too. I need to share my sound. Hold on. things that's really nice about this with a simple melody like this is the congregation can join in and so at, at our parish everyone knows uh this this refrain that we do here um you know oh, praise ye the lord supremely exalted and so everyone just joins in and people are doing the verses everyone joins in. it's really beautiful to hear the whole congregation singing this so now i'll ask abuna are you familiar with uh the tone six melody that would be uh done with this as well since it says it can be done in either tone six or tone one yeah i mean I, what i know it's usually in tone one but especially among the antiochians in the old country always uh arabs tend to make everything heart chromatic <laughs> so just uh it's it's the uh, def default melody if i can say so yeah I think, I mean, I try, I, I usually, uh, we grew up, uh, you know, chanting in tone six, but lately I've been, you know, since I came to the state and get to know more about it, like it's actually in tone one and you listen to Greek. Uh, I mean, I'm sure uh, this is one of those hymns that you probably can find them now nowadays in all kinds of tones, like a lot of stuff now that they were uh, technically don't have a specific tone, but traditionally they were done in a specific tone, but nowadays it's just like you can see them in all eight tones. Okay. Oh, that, that's really interesting. So I remember uh, playing this for Metropolitan Philip once, and he was like, gee, I know it in tone six. So. Yeah, again, it's actually, it's a good, uh, 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 what do you call it, Exp uh, experiment. Just give an Arab who doesn't, uh, who doesn't read music, give him a, a hymn to chant, and you'll see, even if you sing it at tone one, like, or start with hermologic, I mean, uh, diatonic tone, and I'll, I'll bet you for a hundred dollars, there's going to switch to tone six. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So good. And so we have all this joy for everybody singing the refrains. And then this is the point in which usually the catechumens are received uh, into the church. And uh, sometimes even, even people need to be baptized before they're chrismated. And uh, yeah, obviously that can, that can be a lot of fun, especially when it's adults being baptized, you know, we have a horse trough, you know, for that purpose that, that the church has, uh, the holy uh, horse trough. Uh, some churches actually have adult baptistries, and that's, that's really nice too. Um, but usually it's mostly people being uh, chrismated, and 
depending on your church, you might get a couple of catechumens that, that are chrismated or, um, I, you know, we've, we've had over, over a dozen sometimes, but uh, there's some churches that have dozens of people that, can, that come in on the Holy Saturday. And this is, I think, the most traditional time uh, that you see people come in. There's other times that people can come in. Usually it's whenever this hymn, as many as been baptized, is sung. Usually that's a traditional time to bring people in the church. And Abuna, I don't know if you want to say anything more about that, but at least in my experience at my church, the vast majority of catechumens come in at this liturgy. On, on I mean, it is the day of baptism, if we can say, beside uh, theophany. Okay. So people can be ready. Uh, they get baptized in the divine liturgy uh, of Pascha at night or on Sunday is their first uh, liturgy. And that's why the holding of candles, you'll see now a lot of people like on, you know, even they would hold the candle for the whole day. I mean, the whole service. But it's also because, you know, they got baptized, they got a candle, and then they keep this candle for so many days, I think, whatever, 40 days or depending on the tradition. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. And so then the next big hymn that we sing is as many as been baptized. We don't need to demonstrate that this session. We've talked about that at some of our sessions earlier this year, uh, maybe when we were doing the Theophany session, um, you know, earlier on. But this is when you then sing this and then people are processing around with their candles um, after they've just been chrismated. It's, it's, it's really, it's really beautiful, obviously, you know, when you, when you see that, when you see that happen. Uh, and then, um, uh, then there's an epistle reading, you know, that, that, uh, you know, that, that talks about, you know, uh, from St. Paul, um, you know, that, that, that talks about, um, yeah, how, how Christ is risen from the dead. And then we have uh, this, this, uh, very favorite hymn uh, for, for many people uh, known as Arise, O God, um, where, where the, the priest in some parishes like my, explodes out of the altar in, a, in an array of flowers and, and, and there's flower petals and all sorts of stuff getting distributed uh, all over the church and the, and the, the kids really, really love this. Uh, and I've got two versions of that uh, uh, you know, to, to play for you here. Uh, it's in it's in uh, tone seven, which you know is many people's favorite tone because it's it's so joyful. So let's let's go ahead to Charlie. To, does in, your priest also do rose petals as well as bay leaves? Oh, it's 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 everything that was on the beer on a Friday is is in is in those baskets. I mean, he comes out. I mean, it's a whole procession of altar servers handing him basket after basket after basket. Nice. It's, it's, uh, it's really something. So, uh, so you, you, let me, let me play you, um, this, uh, this hymn here that my priest did for us to share this joy with us uh, a number of years ago. And it's done by, uh, the, the youth choir of our diocese from the, from the YMM, uh, program. on their CD that they re released that was called Arise, O God. Arise, o Oh, God. 
Okay, so now we have another one um, that I will share with you here, uh, which is the four-part version uh, that's out of the OCA uh, booklet. It's the uh, uh, Turchaninov, and uh, let me just let me just pull that up. Let's see if I got the right one here. Yes. Okay, and now we play our youth singing that version. This uh, CD that our youth did, they did many of these, all, all the hymns we did both in Byzantine uh, and in four part. can see in both traditions this is just very very joyful and I, um, yeah I just, what can i just intercede just for a second please or interrupt excuse me i just wanted to let people know charlie and i um one this was this whole cd was done over a two and a half day um span of time and we had i think there was what about 15 kids 15 15 or 18 kids um and we just we worked them to death but boy did they they had so much fun together and they connected so beautifully and we got all of this done at the village um, almost in a live situation we recorded some things a couple times but it was it was so great it just gave me chills thinking about it again and remembering um all standing around in the lobby of of the uh of the village and just getting we tried we did this recorded in so many different places at the village until we found the perfect sound that we were looking for and it was just really great it was a lot of fun yeah and it, ju it just warmed my heart how they embrace both the four-part music and the byzantine music absolutely so so great that they were they were, you know they're fluent in both uh flexible in both and and the joy in singing both is, uh, you know, evident when we hear you hear these two versions of, of uh, you know, the same hymn. So after all of that joy and the priest is throwing flowers and bay leaves and whatever else he has, uh, you know, and, and, and now we've got all this stuff on the floor of the church and everyone has just sung their heart out and stuff. Then a really amazing moment takes place in the church because then the next hymn that we hear is let all mortal flesh keep silent and people who come from um from western traditions uh catholic and protestant traditions would normally associate that hymn with around christmas time you know uh and one that's in a in a minor key you know 
Little mortal flesh keep silent. You know, you, you've, you've heard that before. Well, you know, um, minor key, uh, th there's a relationship here, obviously, because this hymn in the Byzantine is in, is in tone one, you know, um, you know, which uses a scale that is, is very much like, you know, the minor scale uh, in, in Western music. But we use it here at this moment because what's just what's amazing about about this hymn when we look at the uh, at the words of it. Let, let's let's examine the words right on the on the music. Let all mortal flesh keep silence, and in fear and trembling stand pondering nothing earthly minded for the king of kings and the lord of lords cometh forth to the faithful before him go the ranks of angels with all the principalities and powers excuse me here the cherubim full of eyes and the six-winged seraphim, covering their faces and chanting their hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The contrast between um, all that intensity and, and, and joy from, from uh, Arise, O God, to this hymn, which is typically done slowly, thoughtfully, prayerfully, somewhat quietly, right? Um, in both versions that we're going to share with you here, uh, Byzantine by Kazan and um, and the four part by uh, Sir, uh, Father Sergei uh, Gorgolev, you'll notice, even though they're coming from different traditions, this the same feeling of um, of what this moment is. It basically, the church gets quiet from all that noise. All mortal flesh keeps silent. And, and what we do, at least in our church, um, and have done so for quite a long time, we sing this hymn once, and that's it. And then we let all mortal flesh keep silent. And what's amazing to me is after hearing this hymn and stopping, and you know, we have so many children in the church for this to see the flowers and all that, the children stay silent. It's like, it's like the peace of the silence just pervades the entire church. And it's a different kind of intensity that you experience. And it's, for me at least, it's, it's overwhelming at times, um, but, it, but incredibly, incredibly beautiful. So first I'll share with you um, uh, Kazan's uh, version in um, uh, Byzantine Tone 5. And then, and then we'll play you the, uh, the other one.
just a completely different, completely different uh, feeling where we are now. Now we're just in awe of this miracle you know, that has occurred. And you get that same sense of awe listening to uh, Father Sergei Glagolev's version of Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence. And um, I'm going to play that for you now. And then after that, it's just really the remainder of the Liturgy of St. Basil. There's a couple of small hymns here and there that get replaced. There's a communion hymn. But really, these, this is really the centerpiece of what's happening in this liturgy. You know, this, this joy in the resurrection, all of a sudden, this wonder and awe. And some people like to call this you know, more the, you know, the quiet resurrection service. You know, We don't say Christ has risen at this service and, and uh, stuff like that. So let me play you this video I found of this Glagolev piece conducted by Germanoff.
we could keep going that, that recording is like seven minutes long um but it gives you it, it just gives you the feel it's it, it's quiet it's 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 an awe of this of this miracle and um what i'll leave you with um this year you know because of covid we've got limited you know attendance again uh uh, actually, last year we couldn't even have attendance to these services. We have limited attendance and people have to sign up. And out of all the Holy Week services, um, the one that sold out first was this service, which tells you at least at my parish, this is people's favorite service. And, and I think you can tell from my enthusiasm for the service, it's a favorite service of mine as well. So. I'll leave you with that. I think I'm right up to where we wanted to be time-wise and I will turn it over uh, to the good hands of uh, Marina and Abuna John. Well, thank uh, you very good. much, Charlie. You did a beautiful job. Thank you. That was, that was really great. All right, nicely done. Boy, there was no breathing in that. Did you get that? There was never a breath. Did you notice how much they followed their director? That was really good. Yeah, that was impressive. I don't know where that recording was done. I feel like I've seen that place before somewhere, but I, I don't know. But boy, that was impressive. All right. So our next, uh, our next section, if you will, is the Midnight Office, Rush, Matins, and Liturgy, that we are going to do our level best to jam into the next uh, hour and 15 minutes. So uh, Father John, I'm gonna let you just start off. It's all you. You have to turn on your mic. <laughs> Great. Um, <laughs> now, you, now you can hear me. Um, so the, in the midnight service, we don't have, you know, we're not uh, doing anything. Well, the, the midnight service is the same canon usually that it started from Holy Friday anyway, from the lamentation service. So it's uh, um, um, the canon of Holy, Sa basic Holy Saturday that we chant on Friday, the lamentation service. Um, and then, I mean, um, you know, we, we start with the very, you know, we, we, um, turn the, uh, the church into dark, very dark. And then, uh, the priest comes out with a candle, um, and, uh, uh, I mean, a candle and he sings, uh, a famous hymn and a very, uh, popular hymn come you take light from the light and then the angels in heaven um are we uh are, do we have it to share or should i pull it out or pull it up or Chris, uh, this is what you share, yeah if you want to share uh the byzantine version the the music that we actually have for uh in the archdiocese the pink book that i think many of you guys are probably familiar with uh we have as a uh tone six Russian uh, for both uh, come you take light from the light and the angels in heaven and I'll go ahead and share that one if you'd like um, while uh, while Father John is going to look into you know he'll be presenting the the Byzantine let me make sure that I get to the right screen sorry about that I just have to go up the that's like one good thing about books that you can switch you know you can flip the pages very easily than when you're on an iPad and you're just like. Uh, okay, I'm ready. Oh, but you want to play first uh, the, the tone six one? Sure. Yeah, let me do that first since I have a quota. Sorry, I have to deal with commercials on mine, so. Sure, sure. Well, you don't want us to hear the commercials? Yeah. Probably not.
the next uh, section that's in here, uh, the recording you're hearing was done by our uh, YMM and their Teen Soyo members. When, when they recorded this, they used the actual wording that was in the pink book. What's currently on our Archdiocese webpage has rearranged the words of the second uh, of the, the the second portion of this to match what's in the uh, the Archdiocese Pasca book. So the words don't match up exactly with what they're singing, but the melody should be the same. Let me go ahead and share that. Share the Byzantine. Sure. Uh, you, you we'll do, I mean, I'm sorry. You uh, uh, share the Western if you don't mind from Shadi's okay. Byzantine, and then I'll have the, I have the Byzantine in front of me. And uh, come receive the light. Uh, I'll do the two versions, the new versions that we've done, HTM version and Nasser uh, version. Uh, I'm sure people are used to uh, Kazan, but we're introducing a couple other just you know to have a, uh, just a variety. Um, you know, it's saying, uh, come receive the light. It's, it's uh, chanted as many times as needed till everybody basically got their candles uh, lit and on their way outside. And then, of course, on the procession, while, you know, when everybody got the light and they're leaving, um, we sing angels uh, in the heavens or Christ our Savior. But uh, do you guys know where this hymn comes from? Well, I'm sure some of you know, some of you don't. It's actually from the Vesper service of Tone 6. It's the first aposticha of Tone 6. So on Saturday, every, you know, on Saturday of Tone 6, the first hymn of the aposticha is this is where the, this hymn comes from. Uh, Angels in the heaven, O Christ our Savior, praise thy resurrection with hymns. Deem us also who are on earth worthy. Okay, I'll do Shadi's version, and then I'll do my version, and then, you know, one, one, and then I'll do uh, angels, okay? Patarararam, come receive ye light from the unwaning light and glory. Christ, who is arisen from the dead. That was HTM, based on HTM's um, version. Um, Father John, your sound is going away. We don't know what's going on. It just kind of pooped out in the middle. How about now? Mm, did you unplug yourself or? I hear, do you hear me now? No, barely, barely, barely. I, I, okay. Try putting uh, putting on, on the top of your screen where it says original sound, top left hand corner. Turn on the original sound, see if that helps. I, you see that button? It's up in the left hand corner. I, I, meeting inform all I see is meeting information. Wow, I'm a bit. Now? Wow. Right up, no, right up beside where it says recording, there should be something that says turn off or on original sound. No, I have a Zoom refresh to YouTube solid side by side. I only have, it says meeting information. That's all it says. Preparing for Holy Week and Pascha. I just. That's, yeah, we're not getting you at all. Maybe unplug and replug your microphone or is it part of your com computer? It's part. Do you have a headset you can use? Do you have a headphones, Father? I do have headphones. 
Why don't you plug those in? They may make it. Dip they might work. Hmm. Meanwhile, if anybody wants to talk about something else, we can't hear you enough for you to tell us anything. I'm sorry. You want Charlie to sing it while we uh, get organized? Okay, Charlie, you're on. You have to turn on your mic, though, Charlie. Yeah, so you can hear me, right? Come ye take light from the light that is never overtaken by night come glorify the Christ risen from the dead can you hear me now I honestly don't know what I just, I didn't touch anything. I didn't I know. Like... It was, you were fine and then it got softer and softer and softer. It was really weird. That's okay. the devil. I, All right. Well, you're devil. back on father. Go for it. <laughs> sure. Uh, angels in the heavens. It's in tone six. Uh, but technically because it is uh, chanted, if you look at it, it's in emulogic style. Like every syllable has one uh, musical note. So it will follow the soft chromatic. So it will sound like tone two. Name, angels in the heavens, O Christ our Savior, praise thy resurrection with hymns. Deem us also who are on, on earth worthy to glorify thee with a pure heart. Is this yours or Shaddy's? That's Shaddy's. This is Shaddy's. Okay. Yeah, and, and it can all, it can also be done in in the tone six hard chromatic too. I've heard that. Uh... I'm not familiar with it, but I won't be. Well, well, it make you know because usually apostikha you can find them in both uh, ermologic right. and stichiaratic. Traditionally, right. usually whenever you have an apostikha, usually it's called to be irmologic. But in any Anas Matarion, any book, music book that has the hymns for Saturday and Orthros, Saturday and Sunday, Vespers and Orthros, they usually have everything, the praises and the Lord of Christ and the Apostlecha in both uh, Stichiratic and Irmologic. So I can see you while we're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, because I think that's that's what we did with the, uh, with the youth recording. Um... Okay, what is next now? So I guess while we're outside, that's where we'll talk about uh, just very briefly. Uh, we do have a gospel reading. We do do Christ is risen multiple times with let God arise. I don't think our plan was to go through versions of Christ is risen tonight because foreshadowing two weeks from tonight, <laughs> we've got a whole session on different versions of Christ is risen. We hope everybody tunes in for that. Um, so while we're outside, we, we do the gospel, we do Christ is risen with let, God, the let our God arise with Christ is risen, we'll have a great actinia, and then the priest will bang on the door. Mm -hmm. um, and that brings us back inside where we'll talk a little bit more about the Paschal Canon. Sure, so right, uh, uh, you know, right when we, uh, the priest knocks on the door and he does the dialogue between whoever is inside, and the doors uh, are opened, uh, you know, you go in and singing the uh, uh, the Paschal Canon. If I can take two seconds here, well, a little bit more than two seconds. Um, one of our uh, uh, veteran priests, if I can say, he told us a bunch of seminarians once, uh, he came to visit us at Holy Cross, and he told us that his first, uh, his first church uh, 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 assignment, at his first assignment, Pascha, they went outside, they did everything, the rush service, whatever. He knocked on the door, 
walks in holding the gospel and he's looking at the chanters like start the canon and they're looking at him it's like no it's you he's like no no i don't want to chant it you guys you start they're like no 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 you're you're singing now father and he's like okay so he started today is the day of resurrection and then looking at him like whoa whoa hold on hold on so they stopped him and they're like what are you doing father and he's he's like well i'm doing what i'm supposed to do you know before the book of you know the holy week book and like whatever before they used to whatever maybe nasser or whatever book they used to rely on and they're like uh no it's uh the the uh, entrance hymn of the little entrance basically in divine liturgy because the priest before him for so many years did not believe in orthros i guess and for especially for pasca it's like "Eh, it's too long so the i mean he kind of like followed the older older tradition where little entrance it was basically people coming from where like from outside coming in so he's like maybe i should revive this but like but people still did orthros, not like, you know. So when they walk in, this old, you know, the priest who was, uh, you know, before the current priest who was telling us the story, that it, that was his little entrance. That was the little entrance of, the, you know, during the liturgy. So all orthros is gone wow. in a little bit of divine liturgy. Blessed is the kingdom or anything like this. That was not important, you know. You don't so need you're it. suggesting that we should uh, ask our priests to do that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not I'm just, you know, I'm just telling just you. Just cut a whole hour out of the service. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, cut everything related to, you know, to Pascha. What is the point of hearing, you know, uh, again, you know, through the intercessions, you know, of the Theotokos or Save Us or Son of God, the, like the hymns that you usually hear every Sunday? What happened to the ones for Pascha? Anyway, I just wanted to share that. <laughs> but it's usually the canon. I think Marina is going to play, uh, you know, Russian style, a beautiful canon. I am. So let me, I, I'll share my screen and hopefully right. yeah, watch so the, the watch recording, you. this is, um, this is the Ledkovsky um, version. I assume you can see my music at this point. And um, this recording that I have, this is a kind of a rough recording, but this is just a live recording of my church choir um, singing this music. So I'll see if hopefully this is in the right place. mighty high piece to sing (laughs) and that goes on and on and on of course all right 
Father, you have a Byzantine version of the same to share? Do we have a, a the Byzantine version of that? Or is that Chris? We have we have a Canon too. If you okay. if you, you know we can probably run a couple. Again, it's just um, uh, um, uh, just a, a new version using the HTM. I can do probably like a couple a couple odes, just like for people to hear it. Uh, different than Tizen. Um, it is the day of resurrection. Let us be radiant, O ye peoples. Pascha, the Lord's Pascha. For Christ God hath brought us from death unto life and from earth unto heaven as we sing the triumphal hymn. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord. Okay, and then it goes. I'll just uh, go right away for uh, uh, it is, um, where is it? Uh, Christ is risen from the dead, Jesus having risen from the grave. Mm, Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life. Jesus, having risen from the grave as he foretold, hath granted us life everlasting and great mercy. Just uh, that's an example. Of, uh, it's just a regular tone one. Uh, HTM, Holy Transfiguration Monastery, what they did, they tried to meter the text um, uh, to match the original Greek. Um, in doing this has a lot of pluses and has few minuses. Um, but anyway, that was the canon. Okay. All right, so the Paschal Canon, as we know, is probably the majority of that service. Uh, and so we just intersperse uh, the odes of the canon between Actinias. Uh, I'm sure we all have have uh, things about that, that that we remember and that we love. I know in my parish, um, our chanters are actually in the choir loft with the choir at that point, um, and we chant the Paschal Canon. And then when we get to to Christ is risen, the whole group, uh, you know, jumps in together, and you know, the whole parish is really singing together. So uh, I know that 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 brings people together. I'm sure a lot of others do something similar as well. Uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the ex postalarian uh, for for the 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 Paschal uh, Orthro service, and so let me go ahead and pull up the did, Marina. Did you want to talk about? You don't have a choral version, okay? I couldn't um, figure it out. I couldn't find it on the recording. I okay. For a while. Okay. Let me see what I have. Hold on one quick second. And I want to say is this page. Nope, that's not the right one. I was close though. It's like all the way again. Yeah, all the way down. Yeah, a little too far. There we go. No, so it's uh, sung three times. It chanted three times. Um, um, second tone, uh, like you know, like uh, all the ex apostillaria. Nine, well, I won't say all, because we do have some ex apostillarions or ex apostillaria that are in tone three, but the majority are in tone two. No. When thou hadst fallen asleep in the flesh as one mortal, O King and Lord, thou didst rise again on the third day, raising up Adam from corruption and abolishing death. O Pascha of incorruption, O salvation of the world. And then uh, the alternate melody for the third time. Just uh, uh, 
Yeah, so the third one, I mean, it's a, it's a preference. It doesn't have to be done this way. O Pascha of incorruption, O salvation of the world. I mean, sometimes we see, um, we hear people do an ending for the ex I mean, there's nothing wrong or right about this, you know. But um, sometimes you you might have an ending for this ex But I'm not used to endings, but that doesn't mean like it cannot be done. Great. Um, and in in the uh, music that is on the Archdiocese website, again, uh, I put this in the in the chat earlier, the link, um, and I'll post it back up here before too long. Uh, you'll notice that for uh, let everything that have have breath for the praises, uh, Shadi does have a a new arrangement of the of the tone one uh, praises. It's not the Kazan that's in that group. You're welcome to use either one. Um, his his new arrangement though is pretty nice for for those of us who have been chanting the same one for all those years. It's nice to have a a second option. So uh, just to let you know that that is there as a as an option. Cool. All right, and so that actually now will bring us to um, yeah, in we do a, a few praises and then we jump into the the Pascals. Um, let me go ahead and pull up. A, um, a version that we have for, um, it's actually a four-part ver version that you can find on the internet. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up for us. wonder what my commercial is going to be this time. The music. Oh, you have it too. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Let all our voice and desire be scattered. Today, your sacred Pascha is revealed to us. A new and holy Pascha, a mystical Pascha, a Pascha worthy of veneration, a Pascha which is right. multiple uh, verses in there. I'm going to skip towards the end. Yeah. 
as you can see, that goes through uh, the four verses. Uh, it goes through the doxasticon and then into Christ is risen. So uh, that music, um, I, I've, I've heard multiple arrangements of it. Uh, that uh, Bergenson is, or Bergenson, uh, is uh, one that we just found on the internet. Uh, I, I can't now figure out what the link is or else I would share the link with you. Uh, but there are multiples of those, so. Um, are we doing Byzantine too? Sorry? Are we doing Byzantine too? The... Let uh, God arise. Let God arise yeah. and let uh, man in his peace care. Well, that was the one we literature. just did there, but um, let me share the... the um, it's the same while while Chris is sharing. It's also one of those hymns that um, you might find two million five hundred seven, you know, seven, you know, five hundred thousand seven hundred thirty four, you know, thousand five gazillion trillion versions, you know. Um, uh, with Shadi, what he did, he just because, uh, which I really respected, uh, respect that, he just took the same text, you know, from HDM, from Holy Transfiguration Monastery, and adapted everything. He didn't know what to do, like, well, here's text from here, and text from there, and I'll just mute, you know, because usually each composer or translator will have like a, uh, you know, a unique way of translating. You don't want multiple translators and stuff. Um, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered and let them that hate him flee from before his face. A sacred Pascha hath been shown forth to us today. A new and holy Pascha, a mystic Pascha. An all venerable Pascha, a Pascha that is Christ the Redeemer. A spotless Pascha, a great Pascha. A Pascha of the faithful, a Pascha that hath opened unto us the gates of paradise. A Pascha that doth hallow all the faithful. At least that's a, a sample of how it sounds. You know, it's tone five, hermologic, very festal. I won't say rush, like, don't like, it's a competition, like in a race, but like keep it alive. You got to do the third one, uh, Father John. Lord have mercy. Why do you have to do this? Why do you have because, to do this? Because of the, you know. Yes, well, well, you know, it's, it's actually beautiful. The yeah. third one, uh, usually you'll see it in, well, I don't say traditionally as if like, uh, this is like the practice, but, there, you know, when you have this kind of converse, conversation between the angels and the mare-bearing uh, women, um, you know, music uh, is art, and art can be embellished, and, you know, so you'll see lately some embellishment in, uh, um, in, you know, especially in the third one, when you have this kind of conversation between the angels and the mirroring women. So let sinners perish at the presence of God and let the righteous be glad. The mirroring women at deep dawn drew nigh to the tomb of the giver of life. They found an angel sitting upon the stone, and he addressing them in this manner did say, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Why mourn ye the incorruptible amid corruption? Go proclaim it unto his disciples. And if you notice, there's the switch to plagal second or tone six, the heart chromatic, as you see on the screen. Um, of course, to which two words among the dead, you know, uh, amid corruption. Uh, and actually, in concerts and some a lot of churches, they do that. It's actually they even do it more embellished, something like, why seek ye the living among the dead? There's like a soloist that he, here basically comes up and he or she 
uh, sing you know this part why mourn ye the incorruptible amid corruption and then the choir joins uh, joins again go proclaim it unto his disciple i mean definitely in a concert i don't think i've ever heard it in a concert where like this part is not like there's a stop a soloist comes up and you know uh, sings why seek ye the living among the dead why mourn ye the incorruptible amid corruption by himself or herself and then the choir you know goes back and and uh um you know chant the whole thing thank you charlie hey next uh, do you want to talk also about the doxasticon doxasticon sure it's uh, another you know it's just it's a um our, you know, God willing, we'll get to this here. And, uh, you know, I'm sure we have hymns like this, but, you know, there are multiple hymns uh, that you just, like, get to know and memorize in a way just because how beautiful they are. And, uh, you know, text-wise or and, and or music-wise. Uh, so it's also uh, this, the Luxastikon of uh, Pascha is a very uh, important one, a very common one, especially when it comes to Greek or Arabic. Um, you have versions of these where they go for like, you know, three, four pages, especially on Pascha, you know, when they want to make sure it's all festal and stuff uh, in Arabic. You know, also, this is one of those hymns at my home parish I had to deal with, like, oh, we only sing it in Arabic. Like, OK, but we don't need to every time. No, it's sung, you know, multiple times during, uh, you know, from Pascha to, you know, all the Paschal season. There's no way we're going to just do it all in, you know, in Arabic, just because like, oh, that sounds nice in Arabic. It's like, fine, it does. And now God, you know, thank God we do have versions that, you know, they're nicely done in English. I mean, of course, tone five is just, it's my favorite, especially when it comes to this stichiratic style. Like there is joy, but there's still a little bit sorrow because it's not yet completed. Yes, resurrection, uh, you know, everything, you know, well, now we're given the hope. But we're still living in a, you know, in a world that, that death, you know, still kind of wins, um, or at least we still have to die. Uh, so I think that's the, the, you know, that's why tone five fits perfectly there. It's like festal, festal, but it's not like, especially the stichiotic style, it's not like that festal, like, because it's not completed yet. You know, life will be completed with the second coming, and then you know, so bum glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. It is the day of resurrection. Let us be radiant for the festival, and let us embrace one another. Let Say, O oh, brethren, even to those that hate us, let us forgive all, all things on the resurrection. And thus let us cry, 
let us cry. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death and upon those in the tombs. Bestowing life. I mean, it's just a tone five. It's just for me, it's just like it should be called tone one. Well, well, it should. Be, well, I shouldn't have said that. Tone five should be in first place. Yes. Beautiful job, Father. Thank wow. You. Hey, All right. Anyway, next. So, next. So Chris Howard. So um, then there's the Paschal homily, right? And the troparion for St. John Chrysostom. Um, we've all been looking for the music, but we don't seem to have the actual sheet music for this. Chris, do you have it in four part? You said you don't, right? I do not. Actually, my parish is the St. John Chrysostom Parish, and we have a very stripped down version uh, that we do every Sunday. Uh, the one that most people are familiar with is in the St. Vladimir Seminary book. Um, I, can, uh, I can play the audio of it, but... Um, let me unshare. Thanks. But I don't have... I, the, for some reason, it's not in, my, in this book that I brought home. I'm not even sure why. I don't know why. But um, here's, the, here's the audio of it, at least. You might recognize it. time we've learned that song a lot better that particular <laughs> recording it wasn't very good all right and then um that the uh, the homily is always read it's the same homily it's all the it's pre-written for the priest they don't have to come up with anything new or different they just get to read the beautiful homily of saint john chrysostom father you want to talk about that a little bit yeah i mean uh, from the technical point we've had directives of uh with the Sayyidina Philip and continued with the Sayyidina Joseph that you don't need to speak as a priest, you know, keep your mouth um, shut and you already have a text that you're not going to write better than John Chrysostom. So, you know, keep it shut and just, you know, for, I mean, don't use your own words, do not preach, read the, the sermon and that's it. But uh, I would say, uh, you know, uh, in English, we try to also implement this, but I don't know, like, if that's something, you know, you guys do at your churches, you know, in, in the conversation or in the text, it says Christ is risen and something, something happened, you know, Christ is risen and death is a spoil, Christ, Christ is risen. So we have this, um, you know, in the old country, you would hear anytime the priest goes, Christ is risen, everybody's just like, indeed is risen or truly is risen. And then, and da 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 Christ is risen. Everybody yells like, you know, indeed or truly is risen. Uh, you know, da, da, da. and then not only this part, there's also this part, the part when it says, um, uh, what's the word in English? Um, uh, Hades was embittered. Embittered, embittered, the word embittered, which is beautiful. It's, just, it's like, you know how when you put something sour in your mouth and it's just like you can't even stand it anymore. You just want to be like, like you want to, you know, that's basically how Hades had to deal with Christ. He's like, oh, what is this? I'm not like, I, I don't like it. I hate it. It's just not tasteful. I don't want it in my mouth. I don't want it here. Just so it's also uh, anytime we say, you know, um, uh, 
hate is, is embittered, people just basically scream, embittered, like you must make sure, yes, it did, you know, indeed it was embittered, you know, it's just beautiful, you know, so it's like those traditions with a small T, but like, you know, they've, you know, we can't live without them, but living with them makes things like a little bit extra, you know, better, you know, it's just like a better taste, I don't know. I, I have I have a recording of that if, if you if you want me to demonstrate. I mean, if we have time, you know, why not? Okay, uh, but yeah, and and actually, Marina, I had that music. I just didn't know that you needed it. So, because yeah, it's from the YMN. We we almost did it there. I asked everybody except you. I should have thought to ask. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't ask me. So Sorry. it's okay. Let me let me share my screen. And. Let me uh, let me play this for you so you can hear it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see the Turchanov right there. Yep. Okay. Uh, homily. If anyone is devout and a lover of God, let him enjoy this beautiful and radiant festival. If anyone is a wise servant, let him rejoice in enter into the joy of his Lord. If anyone has wearied himself in fasting, let him now receive his recompense. If anyone has labored from the first hour, let him today receive his just reward. If anyone has come at the third hour, with thanksgiving let him keep the feast. If anyone has arrived at the sixth hour, let him have no misgivings. For he shall suffer no loss. If anyone has delayed until the ninth hour, let him draw near without hesitation. If anyone has arrived even at the eleventh hour, let him not fear on account of his delay. For the master is gracious and receives the last even as the first. He gives rest to him that comes at the eleventh hour just as to him who has labored from the first. He has mercy on the last and cares for the first. To the one he gives and to the other he is gracious. He both honors the work and praises the intention. Enter all of you, therefore, into the joy of our Lord, and whether first or last, receive your reward. O oh, rich and poor, one with another, dance for joy. O oh, you ascetics and you negligent, celebrate your day. You that have fasted, and you that have disregarded the fast, rejoice today. The table is rich laden, feast royally all of you. The cap is fatted, let no one go forth hungry. Let all partake of the feast of faith. Let all receive the riches of goodness. Let no one lament his poverty, for the universal kingdom has been revealed. Let no one mourn his transgressions, for pardon has gone from the grave. Let no one fear death, for the Savior's death has set us free. He that was taken by death has annihilated him. He descended to Hades and took Hades captive. He embittered it when it tasted his flesh. And anticipating this, Isaiah exclaimed, Hades was embittered. Embittered. It encountered thee in the lower regions. It was embittered. Embittered. It was abolished. It was embittered. Embittered. It was mocked. It was embittered. Embittered. And it was purged. It was embittered. And it was despoiled, it was embittered, and it was bound in chains. It took a body, and face to face met God. It took earth, and encountered heaven. It took what it saw, but crumbled before what it had not seen. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, Hades, where is thy victory? Christ is risen, risen, and you are on the throne. Christ is risen, risen, and the demons are fallen. Christ is risen, 
Great, Charlie. Is that a normal thing to do that echo? I have never heard that before. Well, we we recorded that in a reverberant church. So. That was cool. <laughs> wow, that was really cool. All right. All right. So, so that uh, is still energy. Yes. So I went ahead and popped up on your screen um, the um, the basic structure of liturgy. Um, you know, when we first start the lit liturgy, um, you know, we go straight into Christ is risen, the priest sings Christ is risen, the choir, the chanters repeat Christ, Christ is risen two times, and then the priest goes into the, the verses, uh, let God arise, we respond Christ is risen, uh, smoke vanishes, Christ is risen, all those, so we go through all of those we end up seeing Christ is risen, what, about 12 times there at the beginning of the liturgy? Yeah, um, uh, and then into our ectenias and antiphons, first and second antiphons, they're the same thing we sing every Sunday because Sunday is resurrection. So through the intercessions and save us, O Son of God, who are risen from the dead, it all continues to be resurrectional. Um, although there are verses there that are specific to Pascha, so we'll, you know, we do have those verses. The third antiphon is where that changes, um, where we do the, the those Paschal verses again, let God arise, Christ is risen, and smoke vanishes, Christ is risen, all four uh, times leading into the entrance hymn. Um, and that brings us to the entrance hymn. Marina, did you want to say anything about the entrance hymn? Um, it's just it, you know, this is the only time that that it's done to in to my knowledge that and we do a we do a simple Russian uh, version of it that in the gathering places, bless ye God, the Lord from the springs of Israel. And it's, it's just very simple and beautiful, um, but it follows that basic, you know, sort of Russian tradition um that you know when we're singing the the regular entrance hymn it goes right into the other part of the music um oh son of god that whole thing so yeah it's just it's very beautiful i do have uh the uh the uh, uh, uh hippocui ready um chris if you would like me to share that i don't know if, if father is gonna is planning on doing that as well um, I have it. If you guys want me, I'll do it. If you don't, we don't have time or anything. It's fine. Whatever you guys want. Okay. Uh, let me see. Let me get this up here. Again, this is uh, there's the this is the the hypocrisy that we are doing. Let me get it get it started, and then I'll jump back to the music. <laughs>
well might go right into the Kentucky. And you want me just to go on, or Father, do you want to do a, a talk about the Hippocoui first and do your um, version or no? I can, but don't forget that the Hippocoui is, it is, um, that's the only actually Hippocoui that we sing in the liturgy. Uh, you know, the Ipakui, as we know, it's always, you know, every Sunday we have it, right? After we finish the Kathismata and we sing the Evlogitaria, and then there's a little um, Ectenia, and then before what we call, we, we chant the, ent the um, um, uh, uh, what do you call them? The uh, Anavathmi. Anavathmi, thank you. I don't know why I skipped. Um, we, we sing the uh, Ipakui. Um, so this one for the Paschal one, we actually sing it right before the fourth ode of Pascha. So, you know, in the morning, I mean, in the Orthro service, uh, most likely it was chanted also in the liturgy, repeated in the liturgy, but with the time it kind of fell out of use, uh, it only chanted only in the Orthro service, but with Pascha, we wanted to make sure that we, you know, it's a beautiful text. So we want to make sure that people hear it. And like, again, in liturgy, that's why I don't understand when people skip matins and just show up to liturgy so it's like are you going to hear 90 percent of the things are you going to hear the same one that you hit every sun you know every sunday what's the or every liturgy even not even sunday weekdays and weekends so probably inserting you know keeping things from orthros uh, you know in the liturgy uh so at least people can listen to something more special about the feast especially here at the pasca i'll sing a couple lines from it if, and then we can continue it's in uh, fourth mode soft grammatic I can, I mean, maybe you don't want to even, Chris, Chris if you don't, it? yeah, I mean, if you want to, it's, uh, that's the Kentuckian, it's like toward the middle of the file. Okay, I'll look for it real quick, I'll unshare, so I don't distract. Yeah, I mean, I can't sing it, and then, you know, it's just a simple, don't force a soft committee. Hmm. When they who were with Mary came anticipating the dawn and found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, they heard from the angel, Why seek ye among the dead as though he were mortal men? Him who abideth in everlasting light, behold the grave cloth. Go quickly and proclaim to the world that the Lord is risen and hath put death to death. For he is the Son of God, who saveth the race of man. Just a simple tone for soft grammatic. Beautiful, thank you. All right, Chris, if I, let me share uh, my screen again, please. And then the next thing that we would be going, and this is like in the middle of, you know, this is where all the specialty hymns are, Treparians and Kentuckians and so forth in the middle of Divine Liturgy. And um, this is now the Kontakian that we would sing specifically for, um, for Pascha. Uh, let me get there, just a sec. Oh, not that, just a sec, gotta find it. I'm out, it's here somewhere, there it is. Okay, and... <laughs> we would sing as many as have been baptized so we get to sing that again instead of the holy god um sorry father did you want to do the kentuckian i i'm sorry apologize 
it's fine. It's fine. Whatever you guys want. Okay, we're we are. I know we, we're trying. We have fifteen minutes, so yeah, if we can, we can. We're almost it. to the end, actually. So, um, if you would like to sing that, and then I have I have a version of the angel that I'd like to share, but um, if you'd like to sing the Kontakian, that'd be great. No, it's Don Eight. Don Eight. Whenever it's a Kontakian or an Apolitikian dismissal hymn, it's it sounds more, if I can say, with a, you know, simple terms, it sounds like Tone Three. It's not anymore based on the C. It's based on an F. No, or I mean, it's not based on a knee, it's based on a ga. No, no, though thou didst descend into the grave, O immortal one, yet didst thou destroy the power of Hades, and didst arise as victor, O Christ God calling to the murmuring women rejoice and giving peace unto thine apostles o thou who dost grant resurrection to the fallen all right so then you could see that um we would keep following the standard um game plan, if you will, of divine liturgy, going into as many as have been baptized, the epistle, the gospel, the cherubic hymn, we're, we're back to using uh, the normal cherubic hymn, unlike what we did in the morning. And then the megalonarion, of course, is um, what would normally be, it is truly meet, but um, we do the angel cried. Now, many, 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 many of us do the angel cry, right? That's can I sing kind it? of. Can I sing it? Can, can you sing it, please? No, no, I'm just kidding. But I like, I like this version. That's so it's awesome. beautiful. It's just beautiful. Um, just recently, I um, kind of re uh, found. I, this is an old version. If those of you that have been around for a few years, you may know the um, the pink book. Uh, that was uh, the resurrectional book that we that we had, and um, it was had lots of great music in it, and many of us used that version. Um, this is the angel that came out of this book, and um, I just recorded it. Um, Chris Hallway was so kind to retype it and make it beautiful for us, and it's now in the library. And um, this is a little recording that I did with um, my church. So I'm, what do you, do you guys see the sheet music right now? Yes, okay. I don't know what you're gonna see as soon as I start this, but let me try to get this out of the way.
right. So your baby's crying in the background. It was like, <laughs> that was Monica's baby, by the way. All right. And so that brings uh, us towards the end of the service. Uh, we do have on the Archdiocese webpage a version of the Canonicon uh, that basically matches most of our other music. It just simply has the words put in there uh, that match the the canon the the uh, the uh, Paschal. Oh, that's not the right one. Let me see if I can share it real quick. There we go. So it's just the same word, the same melodies that we use for pretty much everything. And it's, uh, it has the words, receive you the body of Christ, taste you the fountain immortal. So that's pretty much the, uh, the canonicon, the communion hymn. Uh, when we come back out of uh, communion, uh, we instead of singing, we have seen the true light, we're prescribed to sing Christ is risen one time. Um, as we all know, our clergy need enough time there. Uh, I am going to say nothing other than it's prescribed to sing this one time. Um, if you have a very long version of Christ is Risen, this might be a very good time to do that. I would not do Christ is Risen from the dead, because the priest will need you to do that about 17 times in order for him to be ready. So this is where you choose your long version of Christ is Risen. Uh, we sing Let Our Mouths Be Filled in, in our Antiochian in America tradition. Um, and then we sing, uh, the next thing, the last change there is that it, instead of blessed be the name of the Lord, on Pascha night only, we sing Christ is risen three times. This is a good time to do a nice quick uh, Christ is risen since you're doing it three times. And then when the priest gives the final blessing, I'll let Father John tell us about the priest's final blessing. Oh, so, uh, um, you know, the, the, the usual uh, uh, final ending, you know, the liturgy is through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. But especially during uh, 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 Pascha, you know, Pascha Day and uh, Bright Week, we do not finish with through the, through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, but actually... Christ is risen from the dead. The priest is supposed to say, Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death and upon those in the tombs. And then the choir replies, you know, bestowing life. Some priests like to sing it. Why not sing it? I would definitely sing it. Why would you just like proclaim it like this? You might as well sing it as Christ is risen. Uh, some traditions, they keep doing this for 40 days uh, for all the Paschal service, uh, uh, Paschal period. They, instead of saying through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, um, you know, they'll keep doing bright week and the you know the whole 30 something days after uh bright week but that's the ending of it and of course at the end usually there's also this tradition with a small t that we shout you know crisis is in, in multiple languages and depending on how many people you, you know you have in your parish from different traditions and different communities and different backgrounds you know it's just like all i would say just learn it well it's not the point of like just like I just want to say something different that I don't know in English, you know, or like different than English, and you end up saying God only knows what, you know what I mean? Just for the sake, I want to, you know, um, be careful. Saint John Chrysostom says, even when you don't know the words of something, uh, you know, saying them right, this is what prays for, you know what I mean? So the word will say it, you know, will pray it for you, if I can say. Um, so. Be careful. Like, yeah, it would be nice to know it in Chinese and whatever other languages, but then you better learn it well, you know, not just like whatever it is. And then you just like make it up or something somehow for you. Yeah, I just said Christ is risen in, I don't know, in Bulgarian or whatever. Just know it. Make sure you know it. You listen to it, you know, being a priest or being the, the person who's going to respond or something, you know. Because that's not the point. I mean, it is beautiful that we read it, you know, we say it in different languages, but as long as we say it right, like, you know, saying instead of Christ is risen, you know, saying, I don't know, a monster is risen or something like this, like that's the, defeats the whole point, you know. All right. Well, we we have made it in uh, an hour and 15 minutes all the way from the beginning of Rush to the end, and that will be the fastest Rush Paschal anything you will ever do ever but uh i want to um i wanted to open it up for any uh quick questions we have about five minutes left if there's anything that you would like to ask you you're welcome just to turn on your mic and and ask a question if that works if that's a little quicker than writing it in the chat 
Um, we're, we're super glad you all came tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, we do want to remind you that, of course, there will be nothing next Tuesday um, because we're going to all be really busy. Um, whether you are or not, we all, those are the teachers. We'll all be uh, dealing with lots of services this next week. And we sure hope that, um, you know, although this has been kind of quick and fast um, in some cases, um, you can always go back and listen to all of these recorded um, sessions. We've got everything up on our YouTube page and I believe also in our Facebook and um, there's at least reference to it. So, you know, you can go back year after year and find these. We're planning to keep everything up and if you need anything, we hope that you will reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to help. I know this is a lot. This is a big, big uh, next couple of weeks. There's a great, huge amount of music. Um, uh, Chris has very kindly put our YouTube link into the uh, chat for you so that you can see all the sessions and um, you can find a good portion of this music um, in our uh, library. Um, a good most of the music that I put up there for you is out of the St. Vladimir's, um, uh, the St. Vlad's Press book, uh, which you can get through Vlad Morrison and uh, Capella Romano. That's not what I mean. Um, what is St. Vlad? Uh, St. Vlad's. St. Vlad's. That's all. Right, uh, associate. If, yeah, associate. There we go. If you need something specific and you want to reach out to me, I can do my best to get that to you as well. Um, so any questions from anyone? We hope that you have a blessed, beautiful Pascha. And um, remember that, you know, no matter how, how great your choir is or your chanters, or if you only get to have two or three people there at a time or whatever it is, remember that they're all doing their very best and um, they're, they're doing the Lord's work. And we hope that you will um, remember this year fondly. Uh, we hope that you will also plan to come to our summer Sacred Music Institute that is going to be all virtual again, unfortunately, but we've learned a great deal with our virtual uh, classes, haven't we? It's changed what we've been able to do. We've gotten people together from all over the country and um, it's, sure been, it's sure been enlightening for me personally. Um, I know that Chris Howard will have a couple of uh, things he wants to add before we ask Father to do our final prayer for tonight. So Chris, if you have anything you'd like to add. Um, actually, um, I, the, just a couple announcements. As we said, no, no class next week. Uh, Bright Tuesday. Bright Tuesday is our Christ is Risen. We will have lots of versions. If anyone has versions of Christ is Risen that they think that we all need to see, um, send those uh, to the, the Sacred Music Institute at gmail.com email so that uh, we can go through those and potentially use some of those. Uh, the week after that, which is the, I don't know what the date is, the 11th, there's one final session where we, we're going to work on rhythms and counting. So that's good basic music theory stuff. And then, of course, please don't forget about the summer uh, Virtual Sacred Music Institute. Uh, we are saving the date for right now. We don't have registration open because we want to tell you what our conference is before we ask you to pay for it. So just be watching for that. Probably close to the end of May, you'll see the registration open up. You'll get emails. You'll see it on our Facebook group. Um, so please uh, share uh, that date with as many people as you think may be interested in going. We're going to do our same pricing structure that we did last year, which is $50 a person or up to 10 people from the same parish can register for $250, $250, which means that if you have five or more, you are saving money by registering as a parish. Uh, so uh, we definitely encourage everybody to do that. Um, and so those are the announcements that we had. Any other announcements or are we ready to? I just, I would like to just um, thank uh, Charlie Marge for putting everything together for our Saturday morning service. And of course, uh, Father John El Masia and Chris Howard for helping and making it so beautiful. We thank you so much. Um, we're so fortunate. You, we're so fortunate to have so many 
amazing teachers in the sacred music uh, department and you know we just we come together to share with you everything that we can and we hope that you are enjoying these sessions um, it's been really fun for us to do this I'll tell you it's been a blast so uh, thank you Chris for being our uh, amazing head honcho here tonight show getting everything together for us and father john would you be so kind to please give us a prayer for us to leave tonight very kind i will do so but as long as you promise somebody has to for the crisis risen versions uh, there's a version i heard it once and i never found it again it, they emphasize by death multiple times by death by death by death i don't know somewhere okay. in the middle of the there is a version i've heard it once it's just like it's like death, death, death. You know, so I just, if somebody knows about it or hears, you know, let me know, please. Anyway, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. O Lord and Master of my life, take from me the spirit of sloth, meddling, lust of power, and idle talk. But give rather the spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love to thy servant. Yea, O Lord and King, grant me to see my own sins and not to judge my brother. For thou art blessed unto ages of ages. Amen. Through the prayers of our Holy Father, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.